From Malaysia, electricity cost is very low. Heavily subsidized. But the problem is our fuel cost is even lower. Yeah. Anyway, cars and coconuts. Number, I don't know what's the number. Number eight. Number eight. Lucky episode. It's brought to you by... Kelapa Oasis. Kelapa Oasis. And uh, Pute. And Pute. Pute Subang. And Sri Damansara, we are... We hit the ground already, but we are not running yet. <laughs> Still <laughs> riding. Start, you can start booking already. Oh yeah, you can. You can. We our our whole day is done. Um, but you know like, a lot of groundwork things not done yet. But we are taking booking now, so you can book with us, and you can go to Club Oasis yeah. in Puchong. USJ Four. Hey, sorry, USJ <laughs> Four. Our topic today is electric vehicle. I mean, whether you can drive it in Malaysia viably lah. I mean, this this topic is is close to my heart lah, because uh-huh. I was one of those mengada fella who said I want to buy. I'm electric. not gonna buy any more petrol car. No, I, I I'm still buying a lot of petrol car, but I'm not buying any newly made petrol car. I'm all buying them like 30 years old. <laughs> but I said I will not buy a new petrol car unless I'm I'm changing my Alphard if I have to. So the only petrol car you buy is a new Alphard. Lah. Yeah, I I said that lah. You said that. But I you know as things because things become clearer, or a good cap prices come out. Yeah. Then our Ministry of Transport announced the road tax for electric car. I'm like, Squish. have you seen the road tax of an EQC? That's like four thousand over. I'm like, come it's on. It's mad. What are you going to do? Sell the car? <laughs> Just because you cannot pay road tax. I, I'm not saying it's a deal breaker road tax. Yeah. But it makes no sense because because all electric cars are power dealer. And if you base it on that, everybody in Malaysia is going to be paying two. Three, four hundred ringgit worth of road tax. I mean, all our good care was what? Four hundred ringgit? It's low. It's low. Low. Bro, four hundred ringgit. You know what most Malaysians are paying? Ninety. Ninety, yeah, yeah. Actually, I want us twenty ringgit. Ah, okay, fine. You want to increase it, but four hundred is a bit of a burden. I think four hundred is okay. I think it's okay. What I think is not okay is three thousand for the Volvos. Gila babi lah. Cannot lah. I cannot. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous, and it's not a difficult thing to solve. Uh. It's more linear. That's all. Yeah. In terms of because back then it was penalizing cars above three thousand cc. So let's say you have two hundred two thousand cc is four hundred ringgit. Mm. Two point five is like seven hundred. Yeah. Then three thousand three thousand cc suddenly become two thousand ringgit. Yeah. Then it because goes, because you know S class and all is above that. Yeah. yeah. But come on, man! With electric car, it's they're all like that. So viability. Uh, over the weekend. Hmm. I had a Volvo C40. I specifically asked for an electric car to do a cross-country drive. I didn't. I didn't get to experience that. Yeah, sorry. But <laughs> it was so much hassle. Hassle. We were. I was supposed to come back yesterday, and then we shoot this episode yeah. with that car. But uh, by the time I came back, I was so exhausted from the drive that I was just like, no lah, cannot. Why? Yeah? KB is what 300 plus kilometers. Mm. Uh, not not three, not even 350. 330. Mm. Right? So by right, you're supposed to be able to reach JB, reach your home, and charge it. Yeah. Did that, it happen? That didn't happen. Because you can't blend things right. Sometimes I think I'm going to fuel up a petrol car mm. and first thing in the morning I'm going to leave with a full tank. Yeah. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. Sometimes at night you got to go and run some errands or something yeah. like that. So you won't have a full tank but whatever lah. Yeah. It's a petrol tank. Yeah. You just fill up lah along the way or whatever it is. With the electric car it's different man. Because you have to... You cannot deviate from your plan. Yeah. Your plan has to be so set in stone that any deviation can ruin... can change the rest of the day. Which is why yesterday like... After like one deviation, I just like, no, I cannot. It Life just is tough. pushes everything back one hour. Life is tough, man. For because vehicle. of charging. Because of charging. I picked up the car and I had to drive through traffic to go back home. And then I had to drive to another place to pick up another test car for a short while. And then I went back home. So by the time I really went back home that day, I had, lost. I had 91% battery. Okay? And then in the morning, I started my journey early, before 7 o'clock, before the sunrise. Um, just so that you if don't I, have to run the aircon so hard. <laughs> that, yes. Because the C40 comes with a freaking fixed sunroof mm. with no cover. Mm. You can't even close it. It's ridiculous. Gila. Like, and the climate control is a significant energy drainer. It is. And then you go and meet, give it a huge roof. Like. It, was, it was... Anyway, I drove early and I started driving. And, okay, one thing that is good about the C40 is that the, there's Google Maps integrated okay. in the car. So when you tell your destination, it will tell you how much battery percentage you have when you reach. Mm. And when I put my, my parents' address, they said negative 14%. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, okay. So negative 14. Negative which 14. means you need to make a stop in between. Yes. Okay. Yes. So How I, do you plan the stop? 
in the maps itself, they recommend where the fast chargers are. So I said, okay, I, I'll stop in Ayakaro. That's, That's Malacca, right? Malacca, uh. yeah. So Malacca is an hour plus from, from KL if you drive slightly above the... One third way. the way. Ah, uh, one third the way. Mm. Uh, I thought, okay, lah, one third the way, I can have, a, have my breakfast because I didn't have breakfast when I left. Mm. And I will just charge for half an hour and see. Lah. And it's a fast charger, it's 50 kilowatts. Not that fast by fast charger standards because they go all the way up to like 180, okay. even more than that. I think 300 or so, got, but not in Malaysia. Uh, so I stopped at the place, the Caltex. Luckily, there was no one charging there. Because <laughs> if I went there and there's an EV charging there, oh, then, then gone, lah, you know? So There's only one port. There's only one port. <gasps> only one port. Oh, you'll die. So I got the port, luckily. And uh, setting up was not that difficult. Lah. As long as you know how to create an account on the internet, like on an app, you can do it. Lah. Okay. So I created the account, I put in my credit card information, and then it got charging very, very seamlessly. How much was it? I, oh, <laughs> my battery percentage when I stopped was about 49%, right. less than 50 That means you, you use up 50% for one third of the way. Yeah, because that's the other thing about uh, highway driving with an electric car. The consumption is mad. Hmm. The energy consumption goes up the moment you go above the speed Gila, limit. Gila. Yeah. And I tried to be patient on the way back and drive at the speed limit. It doesn't work out. <laughs> it doesn't work out the same way. Even if you drive 110, the energy consumption is still higher than what your anticipated range is going to be. Okay. So, yeah, I, I stopped there for half an hour, had my breakfast. The cool thing is on the app itself, you can see what your battery percentage is. So while I was having breakfast, some it was quite crowded, so people came and sat with me. Then I started talking to them and then they were like, oh, you're driving. I told them about the car and then I could show them, you know, what was going on and all that. So by the time the conversation got awkward, I was just like, oh, my car charged up already, I have to go. <laughs> so it was, that was quite impressive like, that it was all built in in a very integrated way. So I charged up to 91%, which was about half an hour. And that cost 45 ringgit. That means it took you 45 ringgit to get from KL to Aikoro. About there, about 40 ringgit. Mm. Yeah. That's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And Saha Mahal. He's Mahal. And DC fast charging, they charge it in a very bad way. The calculation is as bad as the Rotex because it's one ringgit twenty cents per minute. And the first half of charging a car, you get more value for money because it charges up very fast in the beginning. And then it starts to slow down. Once you get to 80%, it slows down. It slows slow down. down, yeah. So every minute you spend extra past 80%, it's diminishing returns. Okay. 80 plus, I should have just got in the car and started mm. driving again. Uh, which would have been trick. like... Guys, trick. That's a trick. Lah. You have to do that. But then there's another trick because I, I drove uh, I drove all the way down and uh, when I reached the Skudai toll, I still Skudai had... Skudai is in JB already. Lah. Yeah. Basically, the last toll before okay. you enter JB, I had 20% battery. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to do you're not gonna. If, if there is a traffic jam, you're dead. You're dead. Lah. And if, let's say, you, I had plans in JB, let's say I was bringing a family member or whatever it is, and I can't use my parents' car, then I'm dead. Because there's no DC fast charging, as far as I can tell, no public ones in Johor Bahru mm. itself. You can go to the Volvo showroom and use that, but if you're not driving a Volvo, then you're in trouble. So I decided, okay, before I enter JB, I will park in Skudai, and I'll charge there again. So I parked there and there's a Bordeaux. Burger King. The whole, that whole r and is made for electric vehicle charges. Okay. Because there's a Burger King here, there's a Starbucks here, there's a... Uh, an, another thing, like, it's all just like fast food, fast food, fast food and charges. There's a family mart there. Singapore. So. Singapore, la, Singapore, Singapore yeah, yeah. And when I went there, there was a lot of Singaporeans. Uh. So I, I stopped there and I, I plugged it in. Same charging system. And then only after I, I sat down and plugged it in and ordered some food, you know. Then I checked and there was like, across the road, the other petrol station, there's a 100 kilowatt charger that is only slightly more expensive per minute. So I'm like, I should have just gone there. <laughs> it would have been actually cheaper for me to go there. Mm. Spend less time and get more charge. Yeah, I just frustrated. When it got to 50 something percent, I just decided to go. Lah. So I went, I reached JB at 40 something percent. I drove my parents around. I wanted to show them electric vehicles. Blah, blah. Were they impressed? A bit, lah, but they're impressed with a lot of the cars I bring down. <laughs> so. They will not buy it, I don't think. Mm. So then I... They shouldn't also. <laughs> yeah. Then I, I reached... What uh, do you have to endure? <laughs> exactly, the amount of stress. So when I reached back, uh, the, I was going to drive back on Monday morning. So on, on Saturday... Sorry, on Sunday morning, I woke up and my dad said, why don't you use the three pin plug and charge it at home? Because they give you a three pin plug. Very slow. Very slow. So I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be here 24 hours more. 
so why not, right? Rather than <laughs> I just that sounds like a horror story <laughs> about the unfold. I got the fire extinguisher ready, <laughs> and then I plugged it in, and uh, the the calculation there on the dashboard said it will be done in twelve hours. Okay. From forty percent to hundred percent in twelve hours. Okay. So I was like, okay lah, I'm not going anywhere. It's fine. Not too bad. But when I got to twelve midnight, which is twelve hours later. I look at the dashboard, it says, oh, we're only at like 70%. Oh, crap. <laughs> we're only going to be ready at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, shit. Then I actually woke up at 5 something to, to leave the house. Yeah. It was only at 80 something percent. Oh, shit. 80% is not going to last you to KL. It's not. So I said, like, okay, I have to make another pit stop. Because? My uh, plan was if I leave 100% mm. and I obey the, the speed limit, 110, then by right, what the range tells me should be enough. Because mm. I reach here, I still have 60 kilometers. We can do a short test drive. And then I that's what it. you thought. Lah. That, well, that's what I thought. But in fact, I had to stop at... Uh, I, I stopped at the fastest DC charger that I, I knew was on the Plus Highway, which is a Shell and Porsche end of Johor. Okay, which just, is halfway. Just, halfway, yeah. Mm. So halfway point, pretty good spot to put it. Okay. Uh, I got there and it's, it's run by a different EV operator. So I had to download that app. <laughs> and when I checked the... the it will frustrate thing, the shit out of dude, me. Dude, when I checked it, there was... A, uh, there was a Porsche Taycan that was reversing out, but when I checked the, the status, cannot reserve because it has already been pre-booked by some other Porsche owner or something like that. So I go, imagine you, imagine my battery percentage was less than 10%. percent i will be f***ing bricks, man. <laughs> so I couldn't use that one. I said, never mind, I go to the Aikero one, because not bound, they sure have one. Mm. So I went to Aikero and... Um, I realized the northbound one, I'm not sure if the southbound one has it, but on the northbound one, there's a Tenaga National charger. Okay. Specially made one. 90 kilowatts. Which is Pretty faster good. faster than the, the one that was in the Caltex. Okay. And when I plugged it in and all that, of course I have to download another app. Yeah. <laughs> because why why can't we just have one app that does everything? <laughs> I had to download another app. And when I checked it, guess how much it was? Per minute or whatever. Zero. Free. Free. So, theoretically, electric car can be cheaper than petrol. Theoretically. <laughs> theoretically, but only if you plan ahead and you know when these things are seasonally free or whatever it is. Because I guarantee in, in a few months, TNB is going to start charging for of that. Of course. Because that thing costs like 100, 200,000 ringgit to, to install. Yeah. I think they're giving like charity. They're not going to give it to you for free. Yeah. Man. So, I plugged it in and um, it said if you want a full charge, it's one hour. I, so I, I took up my there's, there's a Starbucks there like you can go there and spend money but I was like no lah because you can run the you can run the aircon mm, you know? while charging while charging okay. so I, okay it's shaded no need to worry about the sun I just took up my laptop started doing work and then before I knew it I thought okay I'll just do until 80% and then go mm. before I knew it I looked up one hour had passed it was already at like 90, 90 something percent lah okay. 40 minutes lah oh that's good that's good yeah it, it basically went from 20% to 80% in 20 minutes. Uh. Where is this? This is Aikaro Northbound, before the petrol stations. By the time you get back to KL? Uh, when I reached KL, it was about 70 plus percent. 70 plus percent. And then, uh, but so no I, matter what, you use more than what is indicated. Yeah. So that's why I was just like, this. I cannot recommend this experience to anyone. Man. And even if someone gives me an electric car to do this again, I will not do this if I have to take my wife or my parents anywhere. It has to be a solo trip and I have to have no time constraints. And you can, you can screw up and say, ah, you know what, I'll just sit down here and drink coffee. Yeah, yeah. So, is it viable? I don't think so. I think if you have maybe an EQS with 700 kilometers of range, a Porsche Taycan with 700, 800 kilometers of range, it might be viable, but I still think you will have a few instances of panic attack or needing to plan out your, your day meticulously. The scares are. Uh. The scares, yeah. Now I begin to see the point of this MX-30. Mm. I think for, for their point of view, is that I'm adding a lot of cost and I'm not solving any problem for you. Unless I, I reach the level where I can give you 700, 800 kilo. Yeah. Eh? Which they did with the rotary. Uh, so no point for me to, to give you more when your usage of this car is going to be restricted to the city. Yeah, correct. I think I understand uh, that mentality comes from a place of compromise. Uh. Yeah. And you see, the, the range that most of the bu buying public are made to see is very misleading. 
Because in your mind, you might think also an Aura good cap with 500km, it means, oh, I can do a Penang trip. No. Really you really? can get 300 at most. Yeah. Yeah. Really think, mm. Like what you said, what it really enables you to do is not charge every day. Yeah. You charge once a week mm. or twice a week. No, for me, it's once every two days. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to once every day. EVs are really, to me, city cars. City. We, the EV revolution hasn't completely enveloped. Uh, yeah. Do we have a similar parallel when automobiles were first in, uh, introduced? The parallel was... Uh, Cost. It was more of reliability, I think. Uh, Can you reliably drive a, an ice car cross-country versus taking a horse or mm. a stagecoach with multiple horses? Mm. Because all the, the infrastructure and the talent was set up to deal with horses. Mm. It was only when the internal combustion engine and the roads were set up for cars to be economically so much more viable. viable. Mm. Then you suddenly see the horses disappearing. So I mean cars and horses existed side by side for what? 30, for 40? Yeah. 30, 40 years? Mm. Late 1800s yeah. to the first 10 years at least of when was Model T launched? Uh, 1910s. That means 1910s. roughly but around 5-10 years before that, horses are still on the road. I would say until until World War II. Is For it? Sure. For sure. Even the German army was using horses <laughs> in when they were invading Russia and all that. Everybody has this fantasy of uh, mechanized warfare and all. Logistics were all done by horses. <laughs> <laughs> so the other... So half, my answer is this. Yeah. I won't be buying an electric car anytime soon. <laughs> In the meantime, I won't be buying any more new made car. I think all I need is two uh, very reliable daily runner. Mm. Uh, one is an Alpha that can carry my whole family around. The other one, whatever lah. I still have whatever level of legacy legacy cars that I can continue to use. Then I'll be driving these kind of things every day, everywhere. I've been dailying them, you know. I remember not so long ago when Autofile first started. If that bowl look at you now, mm. <laughs> saw you and what you're doing, how would you how would you talk to them? What the hell is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> maybe maybe experiencing a pandemic puts a lot of things into perspective. Not just that, like, I think driving so many different damn cars, you realize, dude, it's all a different shade of the same. Shit, like. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's all I different when shade started, of the same. Shit. People were so eager to defend their brand. Yeah, you know, everybody has a brand. Yeah, I started driving cars and like, hmm. Dude, it's all the different shade of the same sh You can You can tell whenever one company starts to do well, within the next 10 years, the entire industry that is in that market essentially has to imitate that company. Yeah. And every car drives so similar now. Mm. You know, whatever we say about, oh, how the delivery of power... No, man. You take these cars to an airfield and you blindfold us, you can't tell what you're driving at all. The way I would tell the difference is through sight and sounds. <laughs> Oh, right. listen, oh yeah, this the sound. The signal. door, the door. The door. <laughs> Something's wrong with the door. The turn signal is a Volvo turn signal. <laughs> <laughs> they are so similar now, actually, that that it, it, it is very difficult to distinguish them. Mm. You know, especially when it comes to X50. Well, a lot of people say Proton, la, this Geely. Dude, it is genuinely indistinguishable, man. You go in there with a blindfold. Uh, you can't, you tell. can't tell this apart from a, a Volkswagen from five, six years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Is, is the power good enough? Well, there's a bit of delay and uh, this turbo lag that you feel. But if you're not pressing on it, you can't tell. Is the build quality good enough? Dude, it's better than some. It's better than BMW many. Is, yeah. It's better than many Germans. I asked myself, oh, how to tell the difference, man, between all this? You're, you're literally picking bones in eggs. Uh. Mm. You know? It's, it's so difficult to distinguish them. And you make such a big... Such a big hoo-ha out of it. Literally every car nowadays is what transverse inline four turbo yeah. charge, yeah, DCT or CBT. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Very few innovation actually. Which is why this, M this MX30 is actually quite impressive. <laughs> Trying to do a range extender version with a. We shall see when it comes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wanted to explain to you how they did it. They in managed to incorporate variable valve technology into into a rotary, which has no valve. Which has no valve. All these electric vehicles have um, essentially energy recovering systems where if you start decelerating, they convert it, they use it like a dynamo. Like. Dynamo, like. it turns uh, into a dynamo. Yeah, so there's resistance in your engine and you feel things slowing down. On this MX-30, I forgot to show you the pedals. You can 
increase the brake regen or you can decrease it. So you can make it so that there's absolutely no brake regen. So you're, when you're free flowing, it's like really no resistance. Mm. You're really free wheeling like in neutral gear. Right. That is something I expect from BMW. It's yeah. a drivetrain experts. So yeah, Mazda did it. And here's what they did for the, the rotary engine to do the, the variable belt timing. When the thing is spinning, they apply a constant bit of regen. Okay, so it's always taking back a little bit of energy to, to you know, thing. so there's a bit of resistance in the rotary. Just as the intake stroke is starting, they decrease the resistance so that the motor spins faster in that small turn. So it's basically pulsing the regen okay. so that when it's in the intake stroke, it's, it's you know, opening a bit more at a certain RPM. And then when it's closing, it increases the thing. So they essentially use regen uh, resistance to achieve to valve achieve timing. Valve timing in a rotary engine. Why? Why don't they just connect the the, the rotary engine to the drivetrain? Because that thing is only achievable. Can you please <laughs> connect the rotary to the drivetrain? Two rotors. That's all I'm asking for. Double charge it if you can. <laughs> they should. They should allow some modding company to do it, but I don't think Mazda themselves can do it because emissions laws you really cannot. Hmm. Um, yeah, but by doing all this and limiting the rotary's RPM to a very fixed state, uh, range, you overcome all the problems. weaknesses of the rotary. Yeah, but it also takes away the character of the rotary, isn't it? Because I mean, one of the positive characters is smoothness and compact size, hmm. which is perfect for a generator. Correct, correct. I mean, when, when they compared the the performance of how much fuel can be converted to energy, it's even better than the BMW i3 range extender. Mm. So Mazda is doing a range extender better than BMW was doing across 10 years but ago. I'm just, I'm just thinking, there must be a residual knowledge pool from those days when they were still making rotaries. Yeah. And where are these people? How are they collecting their knowledge? Because it takes a specialist to think of that kind of solution, isn't yeah. it? You can give it to BMW and they can theorize it. Maybe the, the idea wouldn't even come. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think maybe that's how they came up with the variable valve timing stuff and all that. Because the number of innovations on that tiny, what was it, less than one liter, mm. or one liter uh, rotary engine. Like, those are innovations that only Mazda can come up ah, with. Only people who has continuously yeah. worked on this engine. It's like they open the warehouse and then all the half... All the knowledge <laughs> comes flowing out. Whoa, I can feel my rotary getting back into my blood. I was going to say all the old engineers in cold storage, <laughs> they taught them out. Oh, you taught them out of cryogenics. Come, come, come. We have reached an age where we need to work on rotary. Is this the year 4000? No, it's 2023. 20, <laughs> oh, crap. I only got in there 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last RX-8? About 10 years 2008, ago. 2008, 2009. Uh, around there. Yeah. About 15, uh, 14 years ago. Sorry, we have to freeze you now. Now continue your work. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah. Out of house, signing out.